Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to do a 15.3 style question. That's going to be a nice double integral over a general region. Uh, and so I've selected a problem here from fall semester 2015. It says sketch the region of integration for the integral below and evaluate the integral. And it has a little bit more, but I want us to get trained for situations like this, right? So, okay, we're going to sketch and we're going to evaluate. And then I'll talk about kind of what words that I block out here and why you don't actually need them but they are nice to have, admittedly. So, okay, let's go ahead and first of all, sketch the region of integration. So sketch the region, remember, let's go ahead and maybe work outside in a little bit. So I'm looking at the Y values. This tells us where our picture lives, right? So our picture lives from Y equals zero to Y equals one. So maybe I'm gonna go ahead and put Y equals one way up here, just because I know this is kind of the top of my picture. You could even put it higher if you'd like. All right, now let's kind of read the inside stuff, right? So here's X's, these are X values. So we have X equals Y and we have X equals one. So, okay, X equals Y, that's gonna be a nice straight line. Usually we read it as Y equals X. So there's something like this in it. Y equals one, right, kind of it stops uh, because that's where my picture lives. Again, kind of Y equals X or X equals Y, right? This continues on forever. It's a line that just keeps on going and going and going. But again, we only really care. Our region only exists between Y equals zero and Y equals one. So that's why I stopped there. All right, so there's Y equals X. Let's do one equals X or AKA X equals one. So X equals one, that's gonna be here. And okay, it's gonna look something like this. And again, maybe I'm gonna go ahead and shade here, again, between y equals zero and y equals one. So something like this. There we go. And with that, I've officially completed the first step of this uh, problem, right? Sketch the region of integration. Now I want to evaluate the integral, right? So evaluating the integral, I'm looking at this and it says, okay, I wanna integrate with respect to x. Okay, sine of pi x squared. How do I integrate sine of pi x squared? And you can sit here and you can write, spin your wheels for quite a long time, actually. You know, you can try things like U substitution, and you can try things like integration by parts and all this sort of stuff, and you're gonna get frustrated because it's not gonna work. And so remember, there's this technique that we have, right, with double integrals where you can switch the order of integration, right? You think about maybe integrating with respect to y first. There are no y's, so this is just constant. So it'd be easier to integrate with respect to y first. So let's go ahead and try to rearrange stuff so that way we can integrate with respect to y. And this is where we can actually see that the drawing out, the sketching the region of integration will really help us. So let's go ahead, dy, dx. Of course, our function is going to stay the same. It's sine of pi x squared. And now when we switch the order of integration, again, I'm doing y first. So I have to imagine I'm traveling in this y direction, moving upwards. I enter into my region through this nice horizontal line. That's going to be y equals zero or the x-axis there. And I'm going to leave through this y equals, you know, this slanted line right here. Remember, this was given by y equals x. So I'm going to put x here. So remember, this is a y value, y equals zero to y equals x. All right, now I need to integrate with respect to x, right? So the smallest x value in my region is zero and my largest x value is one. So now we've gone ahead and we've set up kind of a corresponding integral, uh, the bounds at least, with the uh, order reversed. So now let's go ahead and evaluate. So I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna evaluate uh, my y integral first. So I'm gonna have, let's see here, when I integrate with respect to y, well, this is all has x's in it, right? So this is just constant. It's along for the ride here. So I'm gonna have y, and I need to evaluate that from zero to x. So let's go ahead and plug in x everywhere I see a y, and then zero everywhere I see a y. So this is gonna be, let's see, sine of pi x squared, and then this is gonna be x minus zero, technically, right, dx. Of course, subtracting away zero doesn't really do much. Now we can go ahead and evaluate this, and this extra x really comes along and saves the day, right? Because now we're gonna use a u substitution. This is gonna be u equals pi x squared. So therefore, du is gonna be equal to two pi x dx. And you can see here that I have an x dx, right? So let's go ahead and maybe solve x dx. I can go ahead and trade that in for a du over uh, let's see, two pi. 
once I divide by that 2 pi there. So let's go ahead and maybe switch this up a little bit. So this is going to be sine of u, and then we're going to have a du over 2 pi. Now, let's change these bounds of integration to u values, right? It was from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Let's see what corresponding u values you'd have here. So at x equals 0, let's see, we would have u equals also 0, right? Because, again, I'm plugging in 0 everywhere I see an x here. That gives me out u equals 0. What about when x equals 1? Well, when x equals 1, I would have x squared, so that's 1 squared times pi, so that's going to be pi. So this is from u equals 0 to u equals pi. Let's go ahead and integrate. Of course, I see this 1 over 2 pi here. This is a constant. I can take that out. When I integrate uh, sine, I get negative cosine. And now I need to evaluate from 0 to pi. So let's see. If I was to plug in pi everywhere I see a cosine, I would have negative, And cosine of pi is negative 1. So negative, negative 1, that's same thing as plus 1. And then I need to subtract away negative cosine. So I'm going to be adding cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. All right, so I have, looks like, 2 on top. I have 2 pi on bottom, so that's going to do a little bit of cancellation. And I get 1 over pi. So there is my final result. 1 over pi is my final answer. And now let's quickly look at what did this actually say, right, without this kind of black mark here. So it says, right, and evaluate the integral by reversing the order of integration, right? So it actually told us more information, which is nice, but it is not necessary, right? So even if it didn't say that by reversing the order of integration, when you come across this problem right here, you say, this is really hard to integrate, right? There are no techniques that we know in order to integrate this thing, and so we need to actually reverse the order of integration. So it didn't have to say that to you. You still should have come to that conclusion. But yes, they were a little bit nicer in this one. They did say that, but it's not a guarantee that they will be nice, you know, every single semester. So I just wanted to kind of prepare you guys for the worst. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next time.